Laurie Ann Gibson, I am beyond excited and thrilled to be talking to you today. Conversation long overdue. We kind of grew up together in this industry. So today to be celebrating the launch of your book, Dance Your Dance, it's so appropriate and the timing couldn't be better. Um, so thank you for taking this time to talk with me. Well, um, June, you're someone you know, I I'm obviously your biggest fan, sis. You know how I feel about you, but thank you so much for taking time out your super busy schedule. And I'm just so happy that you have allowed yourself to share this moment with me. So thank you, greatness. I couldn't imagine being anywhere else. So let's just dive in because I have so many questions to ask you. And I know that the audience will be thrilled to hear some of your answers. So you're someone who's built a career betting on yourself. Can you talk a bit about how you develop inner confidence? Betting on yourself. Well, in the book, Dance Your Dance, actually the first chapter is titled, uh, the first step, because it's eight steps to unleash your passion and live your dream. The first step, is titled Dare to Dream. So betting on yourself is betting on that dream, betting on that place where you most feel like your authentic self. You know, I bet on my dream. I knew that I didn't wanna do anything else but dance. So I kept betting on that feeling that my dream would produce. Um, and you know, you get to the point where you're like, I literally cannot exist if I'm not doing that what I love. And so that's really what I bet on. You you have this natural fire and in, in burning you like, you know, when you would come to sets, you would have such vigor and enthusiasm. And I would just think, what is she driven by? Like, and then watching you just in your creative process, I, I was always blown away. Um, what helped you to create and understand and develop your creative vision? What's your process? You know, I think the first step is obviously understanding your passion, what you love, what you can't live without, what you cease to exist if you can't do it or have some part of it. Very early, I realized that I wanted to move, that I wanted to create joy for people, that I had the ability to see what wasn't there. You know, a lot of times in the business, people want you to make another Beyonce, make another June Ambrose, make another Gaga, make another Nikki. But for me, you know, I see what's not there. And that's what fuels the ability to have vision and imagination. Um, I wrote Dance Your Dance so that today these young kids, June, could understand how to empower their imagination, not just Google something and copy it or look at Instagram and reproduce it, but really understand how to stretch that muscle of imagination. And I think that's a big part of understanding yourself creatively is giving way to that imagination. Yeah, I love that. And you know, you're also quite the wordsmith. You are filled with mantras and motivational talks. And, you know, and I'm always like, what does she come up with it? You know, like, what are some of the mantras that you live by and that you've lived from the inception of your career that you hold on to still to this day? Oh, my goodness, there are many. But obviously, Dance Your Dance, which is super important for me, not only because it's the title of my book, but it's me really strongly trying to shift the narrative in the culture, in the music business, in people who do have a dream and a vision. It is imperative that now more than ever, we encourage each person to be their unique self. You know, everyone is wired a certain way and today they are trying to sell you to become just like everyone else, or do it this way, or look this way, or talk this way, or you're not successful if you drop a record and it doesn't hit overnight. And that is just not the case. Now more than ever, you must dance your dance and no one else's. And in this book, I take you through eight steps that not only will it unleash your passion, but it will help you identify your dance 
And you can continue to go back to the book and understand exactly what the, what does that mean, Lorian? my dance. You talk about, uh, I know you talk about this in the book as well. Um, and people look at you and they think that you are an overnight success. But this has been a long road. Can you talk about some of the struggles that you face as a young creative over, and how you overcame those struggles? Ooh, yes, struggles and and oppressive mentalities. And as a young black woman, and um, as a visionary that was always trying to do something that hasn't been done, it was very tough. I think uh, the idea that I overcame a lot of insecurities based on being unique uh, was a big thing for me. You know. It's not always popular to follow uh, the non-popular road or to not do what's politically correct. So naturally, I am a warrior and a fighter. And as a creative visionary, you have a tendency to do what's not being done or you don't want to copy. So sometimes when you don't want to fit in, that comes at a cost. And yes, I've faced many uh, people who said, I couldn't, I wouldn't, I'm not good enough, I'm not black enough, I'm not skinny enough, I'm not tall enough, um, I'm too loud, I'm, I'm too passionate, uh, I won't conform. So all of these negativities come your way very early on in your career, and it is imperative that you fight through them that you continue to press past them because those are the moments that will help you define the greatness that you're capable of being and carrying. Right. I mean, yeah, you know, this industry can shrink you if you're not, if you don't come in like a lioness. And even though you start as a cub, you still manifest the ability to grow into something greater. And you recognize that. At least I saw that in you instantaneously. Um, you know, what are some of the life lessons that you'd like to share? Because a lot of young people, a lot of women and, 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 and aspiring dancers, and not just dancers, but entertainers, um, could really uh, use some of what you have, you know, your experiences. So are there any particular life lessons that you want to share that you feel could be of help to anyone listening? I think so. And, 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 and obviously encouraging you to buy the book, Dance Your Dance, because there are eight steps, but there are also, it's supported by a lot of life lessons and experiences that I've been through. So you will get a lot of insight uh, from what I went through. But a big lesson, a big life lesson is, look, it's not going to be easy. It may not happen overnight, but the ability to persevere to allow those no's to become your yes. I talk about staying in your yes in the book. And that is when everything looks like it's not working in your favor, you've got to choose your yes. You've got to choose the dream. You've got to choose your belief in that dream, in that vision. And the one lesson I always like to share is not Everyone is going to see it your way and you have to hold on to the vision stronger than anyone around you. Stay in your yes. I love that. I mean, the book is Bible, you know, it, it really will be this kind of sacred reference. No, it's true because, you know, it really embodies all of, like you said, eight steps. You know, it doesn't over consume you. It's just enough that you can refer back to it. I can, already highlighting tabs, you know, this is how I suggest you go about, you know, diving into this book. Um, who, let me, I mean, let me ask you, how are some of the people- how many, Sis, how many times have you had to stay in your yes, in your June Ambrose yes? Oh. Like, right? You had to, exactly. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, it's one of those moments where you go, oh my life, I had to fight. <laughs> Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, it, it, we came up in a time when it was a male dominant industry, dominating, and it's still quite male heavy. And we we're survivors, you know. At least I feel like we are. I mean, you know, it's a testament. And there, listen, we stand on the shoulders of some great 
women, you know, that have come before us. And, you know, that's why I'm really curious to know, like, you know, who are some of the people that you learned from? You know, uh, Debbie Allen is, and, and she wrote an incredible uh, testimony in my book for which I almost died. But Debbie yeah. Allen is obviously one of my superheroes and what an incredible woman, what an incre incredible visionary. I mean, there, there's just so much to say. June, you inspire me. Uh, you know, there's just so many, my mother, uh, my sisters, you know, um, there's just so many women, uh, Catherine Dunham, Martha Graham, Twyla Thorpe, you know, but that little girl, I mean, Lori Ann, when I think about her, she inspires me. When I think about how much that uh, she refused to give up, she refused to let them, you know, let the challenges change her. I, she inspires me every day that she kept fighting and she keeps fighting. I, I love that you said that because um, I all people always ask me the question, what would you tell your young self? And I would tell my young self, don't stop reminding me as an adult how great and courageous I was now so that I can be that then that I was that I am now. So I, I totally relate to that. Um, you know, how do you use, as you have a lot of passion and, and you speak with such vigor and verve, how do you use that passion to elevate other aspects of your life? Well, you know, if you're not passionate about it, you, I believe that you shouldn't be doing it. You know, even when it comes to making money or building businesses or, you know, stretching out, you know, I just sold a scripted show, obviously, uh, as a director, filmmaker. So there are other areas in the business that I'm uh, transitioning to. But even like I said, in building my wealth, I'm passionate about it because of the purpose behind it. And I think people should be more inspired about the purpose and the process rather than the immediate yeah. gratification or the number of cars or homes or, you know, chicks, you can do whatever it is that you want to do. You know, it's really about the purpose behind the records, the purpose behind the business, the purpose, the intention um, that drives my passion. You know, when I walk in a room, I want to inspire. I want to trans, trans, transition you know um mm -hmm. people from what they thought they could do to what they can do so that passion mm -hmm. is really uh fueled by a purpose and a lot of what drives me is about a positive shift about inspiration mm -hmm. about hope you know about changing the narrative from Mm, you might not be that to, yes, you can be that, to we're enough right where we are, to, oh my God, you're beautiful. Not because, you know, the world told us that skinny white girls filled all the magazines and we couldn't find our images, you know, on a cover, so we weren't pretty. Yeah. No, right. you know, really continuing to shift the narrative, not just because it's the cool thing to do, but because we literally lived that we had to shift the narrative to uh, become our dreams and to survive. I 100% agree. Um, also, um, you know, give us a little sneak peek. Can you give us a little sneak peek of one of the stories that you talk about in the book? Just a little sneak peek. <laughs> I can. Oh my God, there's, there, there's a lot of them. But I, I talk about, um, one night, I got a, a gig for uh, Malcolm X, the movie Malcolm X. Spike Lee had hired me, and Otis Salid was choreographing. And I talk about uh, being friends with a now very famous person. At the time, they weren't that famous. but um, And we went out the night before my first day of rehearsal to the China Club. I don't know if you ever remember the China Club in New York. <laughs> So I was like 17 trying to get the China Club or something. But the point is, I got my 
first job and it paid real money. And I decide, and and my crew's like, you got to go out the night before. I'm like, no, I got like a 6 a.m. wake up call. What are you talking about? So of course the pressure to not let anyone right. down or to, to hide that I was the first one to get a real job of the crew or I didn't want anyone to feel like I was blowing up or getting something that they couldn't achieve. And I went to the China Club to people please, to make everybody else feel comfortable about the fact that I had booked my first real job. And of course, the next day I was late. Missed every train known to mankind pulled up to the set and Otis Salid was like, don't even come in these doors, you're fired. Oh, I gagged, I gagged. Girl, I, I mean, gagged in that, for real. In, in that one little story that you shared, you, you answered another question and that was, you know, what lessons can, you know, young future, you know, dancers learn from this book? You just answered that, don't be late, right? <laughs> You know, don't, don't be play late. yourself. And yeah. Don't be, don't try yeah. to lessen your greatness or your road. That's why I say dance your dance. At that point in time, I should have understood that I had to dance my dance and that I had to go home and get my sleep because I could not risk missing that call time. And instead, sometimes we feel bad when we carry greatness, when we carry a vision, when we carry clarity, yeah. we want to apologize for it. We want to make everybody feel comfortable because they don't at that moment know what they want to do. No, you have to very yeah. early understand that you have to dance your dance and no one else's. And sometimes that means saying bye to friends or putting yourself in a situation where you have to really look out for your, uh, yourself and your roadmap and stick to it. Yeah, I, I have two questions for you, but I, I, you're answering them so rich and I, before we have to wrap it up. And okay. well, one was, I think you started to go into it. You started, I talked about, you know, what advice would you give to young creatives about expanding their crafts? Cause you're so multi hyphen of a, of a creative. You're not just one thing. So how would you, what bit of advice would you give quickly to, you know, um, a young creative about expanding their, their craft. I got some really good advice from Keenan Ivory Wayans, who obviously is a genius. Very early, he said, do one thing really well first, Laurieann, and then you can expand. You can really create a strong base. And at first I was like, hmm, I don't know. And I understood that. And I understood that uh, you want to perfect your strongest angle. You want to perfect your biggest gift. You know, for me, the dance is synonymous, not only with the dance community, but understanding how to create superstars, build superstars, design stage, now writing scripted shows. So the idea that I was really committed to the discipline of dance and I gave it my all to become the very best I could be definitely has sustained me. And I talk about that in the book, train and sustain. It's a step that is very important for today's young kids because sometimes they don't understand the power of training in order to sustain a very long career. Oh, I love that. I think I'm going to use that. Tattoo that on my back. Train to sustain. It's like, oh, that was rich. So sexy. So in closing, um, you know, what do you want readers to take away from, from this new book? I want readers to truly understand that they are capable of living their dreams and that the narrative of being like somebody else, dancing someone else's dance, following someone else's timeline is not it. I want readers to understand that there is nothing that is not available to them once they understand their dream and once they dare to dream. I want readers to be inspired, but from a really powerful place, not just from the idea of inspiration, but truly powerful place where it will create transformation. And you will not be afraid to own your dream and dance your dance. There's no fear attached to what you wanna do. And these steps help you understand it. 
I that call it your roadmap, too. never giving up. Oh, oh that's good. Because, you know, and, and now would you, would you consider this book to be one of those things you can just get through really easy? You know, like, is it one of those... I call them bathroom reads. So, cause you could just, while you're taking your break in the bathroom, you can kind of get through it. I think, you know what, June, I think that's exactly right. It is a bathroom read. It's an everything read. It's very easy to get through. Like I said, it's eight steps, but it's supported by stories that very quickly help you relate to the situation in your life where you can apply the step. And you learn a lot about my journey and the industry while understanding exactly how to slay every giant that's standing in your way. Again, Bible spoke like you, that was a ministry. I mean, Lorian, you were, let me just give you your flowers right now, your accolades. Uh, you know, like I said, the timing of this book as we are all under construction and re reevaluating ourselves, thinking about how we can grow, not only as humans, but as creatives. This is the perfect to me go to the perfect go to, no, I think you know, um, no, I'll let you go. No, I think you're absolutely right, sis. And I, I appreciate you more than anything coming out of COVID and trying to understand how to restart or understand how, because mm -hmm. it has changed. It has changed for the best. And you're right. This book is definitely a personal touch and journey for me to not only empower the superstars that I've built, but to empower yeah. everybody to take advantage of where we are and, and, and dream again. Okay, I'm, I know I said last question, but I have to ask you this because I, I remember when I first held the galley of my book for the first time and how I felt. It was very emotional. Can you tell me about the first time you got the actual galley and actual hard copy in your hand? Were you like a mess? Were you boohooing? <laughs> I'm still a mess. I gotta tell you, I'm like, I got a book. I got a book. You know, I'm still a mess, but it is a, like, it's, it's powerful because I didn't know that I had a book in me and God knew it mm -hmm. and its purpose and it's, it, it's, it's, uh, a really special thing because uh, I didn't understand the power of uh, what we go through and when we share it, how it can impact other people and how they can connect with a very real process and identify with your pain and with your perseverance and it can inspire someone to get it better, be stronger and be faster. So. The, it's alive, like it's in my hands, but it's dancing. But I'm just like, anybody that feels like they can't listen, you know, Boom Cack has, she will continue to. And um, this is a point of contact for you. So I'm excited to watch it be effective in the way that it will inspire people to dance their dance, no longer feel like they have to be like anybody else, or no longer feel like they have to hate themselves or deny themselves the love and the freedom to dance their dance. Well, thank you, Lorianne. Thank you for taking us on this journey with you. Congratulations. The book is extraordinary. Um, all I have to say is bravo. Speak your truth and dance your dance.